draw a three by three determinant, and as columns, where should I put them? Let's put them in columns one and two. I'll put these two vectors without the square roots. Instead of telling you what the answer is, I'll warm you up to that answer. Okay, and I will ask you this lead, leading question. Lead up question, what would you call it? A lead up question? I think that makes sense. If I, if I made the third column equal to the first column, what would the determinant be? Zero. If I repeated the second column as the third column, what would the determinant be? Also zero. Now can we think of the determinant as being a dot product in some sense, right? We have to inch our way towards orthogonality. So we kind of have to see inner products in the determinant. And the answer is yes. If you think back to the Indian way of doing three by three determinants, it, look, it works like this. Whatever is here, the determinant will be plus or minus, because I don't want to pay attention to the overall sign, but it will be this number times this determinant minus this number minus this number times this determinant, 0, 1, minus 1, 1, plus this number times this determinant. Everybody remembers this? So it is kind of like an inner product because these three determinants that I outlined here are three numbers if I take minus the middle determinant. Because it's like it's, it becomes like a dot product because it's this times the first number plus this times the second number plus this times the third number. And if you think back to those numbers, whatever they are, that will be a vector that's orthogonal to each one of these. Why? Well, we already answered that question. Because if we take this vector and put it as the third column, the determinant will be zero. In other words, the dot product with these three numbers will be zero. And if we take the second vector and put it in the third place, its dot product with those three numbers will be zero. So these three numbers of these subdeterminants, I guess they're called, remind me what they're called? Uh, cofactors. So these three cofactors represent a precisely the vector that's orthogonal to each one of these columns. Does that make sense? Kind of a nifty trick. So let's actually put that third vector in here. So it will be, so what will go in here is this determinant, which is two. And what will go in here is minus this determinant. 0, 1, minus 1, 1, that determinant is 1. But what goes here is minus that determinant. And finally, what goes here is this determinant, which is minus 1. And here is a vector that's orthogonal to each one of these. You guys want me to repeat it once. So I'll just say it in slightly different words, and let's see if it makes more sense. So, let me remind you that these numbers, so this one right here is minus 1, right? That's what this determinant was. This determinant right here is 1, but minus that determinant is minus 1. And finally, this determinant right here is, we said 2. Right? Okay. Now, what we said before is something that we know from determinant theory is that if I put 0, 1, negative 1 here, then this determinant is 0 because the matrix has linearly dependent columns. So yes, the determinant is 0. But now let's interpret the fact that the determinant is 0 from the Indian perspective. And from the Indian perspective, the fact that this determinant is 0 means that 0 times this number, which is 2, plus 1 times minus that number, which is minus 1, 
plus minus 1 times this number, which is minus 1, equals 0. So in other words, what it's saying is that 0, 1, negative 1 is orthogonal to, what was it, 2, minus 1, minus 1. And by the same token, 1, 1, 1, I could repeat the same argument. If I put a 1, 1, 1 here, the determinant is once again 0. Why? Because there are two equivalent columns, so the columns are linearly dependent. Now let's interpret it from the Indian point of view. And from the Indian point of view, it says that 1 times this determinant, which is 2, and so forth. And so this will once again show that 2 minus 1, 1, or 2 minus 1, minus 1, I should say it correctly. 2 minus 1, minus 1 is orthogonal to 1, 1, 1. So these three numbers, with this extra minus sign for the middle one, because they need to be alternating, is the vector orthogonal to the other two. So that's kind of a very neat way of doing it. And so these three numbers are actually called the cross product of these two vectors. That's where it comes from. And just to make it clear, this trick works only for in three dimensions. 